Hi everybody, all my followers. Uh, welcome to another video. Okay, so this video today um, is not really a follow-up, uh, but in a way it's going to be linked into a video that I've done uh, not long ago. I'm going to leave the link in the description below of that video, and on the other video I'm going to put uh, the link into this video uh, in the description. So, some time ago I posted a video on how to read and write uh, on the bench uh, this is you uh, so it's a magnet Morelli uh, MJD 6JO um, and um, basically I've showed you how to read and write the flash uh, the maps and uh, the EPROM uh, on the bench through the BDM port so if you are interested go and watch that video now, doing that video, I've done the stupidity of mentioned that in that case I was doing it to remove the immobilizer. Uh, now, which I was, but I should have sticked to the read and write, and I should just I should have just showed you how to read the ECU, how to write it back. That's it. I shouldn't. I should have not mentioned. Uh, what I was doing there in that case, but I did and uh, I don't know why I didn't got that under the comments below But I got a few um, I think it's called private message uh, into my uh, YouTube um, I got about three or four From uh, very angry users Saying that I was uh, misleading you guys because that was all BS and uh, it was not possible to remove the immobilizer on that ECU. Um, I mean, it's possible to remove, but not keep the car running. Um, I'm not going to share the users or the message, it doesn't really matter. Um, um, but what I'm going to do here, guys, I'm going to show you uh, exactly how it's done. So, theoretically, and if you're going to look, if I look in this video, uh, because you are trying to do it, uh, you probably already came across a lot of forums and stuff, which I did as well at some point, which I'll take you through the story, um, and where they'll say it's not possible. Um, hopefully, I will be able to show you that it is possible. Now, um, so, so let me tell you the story. So I had this car here, uh, it was a uh, combo uh, 1.3 CDTI was a 2006 and um, it doesn't matter the reasons why I had the car here to remove the immobilizer okay so uh, I've connected the as you've seen on the video that is on the description below I've connected the uh, ECU to key tag um, I have um, download from the ECU the EPROM, run the EPROM through um, one of my softwares, one of these softwares down here, one of these softwares here that I can do that on that uh, ECU. Um, and um, Um, so I run the software through. Sorry, I just got interrupted. So I run the software through, um, and uh, I've loaded the, the software back into the ECU. Uh, I got the car running. Uh, put it, put the ECU back on the car. The car started straight away. Um, a week later, the car stopped starting again. So the car came back. I have um, reload the same software again, the same uh, file, the car started again, two weeks later the car stopped starting again. So the car came back, I reload the file, the car started, but this time I didn't let the car go because obviously it happened twice, the chances are it going to happen again. So at this point I was a little bit like, okay, it might be that the software I'm using, um, or the software I'm using, uh, is now removing the immobilizer correctly. So I've tried all the softwares that I have and they all removed the same data 
in the file. Uh, so they all did pretty much the same thing. So I thought, nah, the change size is gonna happen. It's gonna happen the same. So if you looked at the other video carefully, you're gonna see that when I select the file to upload into this U, the file does have a name, uh, which is that name in there. I don't know if you're gonna be able to, to read it. I hope you do. Okay. So what I've done is uh, I've contacted uh, this company and I request um, if they were able to do it and which they respond uh, uh, positively saying yes we can do it send us the file um, and all that so I've sent the file obviously I paid for the for the service so I've sent the file they send the file back to me and indeed the file they sent me uh, has been changed um, quite differently than the one that the softwares I have was doing so they changed data in different places, in the same place where my software was doing, but they also changed in other places of the file. So I thought, yeah, that's that's probably what the problem was. So I reload that file they sent me into the ECU, put the ECU back on the car, the car started straight away, and they took the car away. Now, for reasons that doesn't really matter, the car has been off-road um, until about a couple of months ago. Uh, when they put the car back on the road, a few days later, the car stopped starting again. So they brought me back the car. I put the same file, the file that this company sent me, um, and the car started straight away. But at this point, I thought, I'm going to mean it, so it just happened again. So obviously, this file is having the same problem as mine. This is when I start to look over the internet, forums and stuff. And yes, a lot of firms they say you can't do it. You can do it, but with a few cycles, uh, the ECU locks itself again, which is what was happening. So what I've done was um, I've tried different ways, uh, changing uh, some on the flash memory as well on the maps, um, changing bits and bobs, but nothing worked. Uh, what was happening was um, between 15 and 25 cycles of the key or start and stop uh, the ECU would lock itself so I was doing some other work on something else that is never going to be on video but doesn't matter when I had this idea now it might be I'm not trying to claim any credits here it might be that somewhere over the internet someone already said that's how it's done if they did good if they didn't, um, I don't know, I, I didn't look that, that deep. I'm not trying to claim any credits here, guys. If someone, like I was saying, if someone already said it, that's their credits, not mine. I've came up to this um, on my own. I didn't, I mean, over the internet, all I found was that was not possible. Um, so as I was saying, I was doing some other work uh, on something else. And um, I had this idea. So what I've done is, rather than read the ECU through the BDM, what I've done was, I removed the EPROM. So this is the same ECU, and the EPROM is going to be somewhere. So this is the upside of the ECU. On the back side of the ECU, the EPROM is going to be here. So this is the processor where the flash is, where the maps are. It's the MPC555. And here you have the EPROM. This EPROM has been removed, but here is where it is. Okay. So, um, what I've done is I've removed the EPROM and um, then I've reloaded the file using, in my case, I've used this uh, programmer, which is this programmer here, but it works with any other programmer capable of reading this chip. It's a 95 uh, 320, so Willem also do it. Uh, Xprog, forget about it. He reads and writes, but you can't do this that I'm going to show you. So, what you need to do, guys, is quite simple. Before you write the chip, so let's say I'm going to load that program. Okay, so I've loaded the file. As you can see, the file is here. 
all the data. Now, before you write this into the chip, you select this. That and that. And by selecting these three uh, options here, you are protecting the chip from being written again. So basically what happens is, when you put the chip back onto the ECU, the ECU will be able to access the chip, to read the information from the chip, but this will prevent the chip from being written again. So the, chip, the ECU will not be able to write nothing into the, into the EEPROM again. And because it won't be able to write nothing into the EEPROM, it will not be able to lock the ECU again. So after I've done this, I had the car here for over a month, starting the engine every single day, a few times a day. I've started the engine in total about 70 times, 70, 70 times in about 29 days. The car is gone now for about a week and it's still running just fine. So, um, so that's how, I, um, how I've done it. Um, I really hope this answers or clarifies the users that have sent me those uh, rather nasty messages. Hope this clarifies um, and hope this helps someone out there as well. Uh, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you still have if you still have any questions or comments, uh, please put them below. And like always, uh, thank you for watching.